I say what? Huh. Good God. What is it good for? Making spikely movies. Say it again. Hey! What's up, what's up, what's up? This is Travis, AK Mr. Levius, and I am finally sharing on video my crazy story on how I traveled to Thailand and ended up being casted for Spike Lee's Netflix film, The Five Bloods, and I made it a point to dress for the occasion. Now you can call my story luck, you can call it a coincidence, manifestation, or divine timing, or whatever, but I'll just share my experience and let you decide. Some of you might have seen my article on CNN and Travel. The link is in the description if you haven't read it yet, but I wanted to share even more of the story details with you. Now before before I get into it, please subscribe to my channel and give this video a like so that my little channel can grow. Thank you in advance. All right, so the premise. My line of work is freelance travel writing, and I tend to cover high-end luxury travel for several different magazines and websites. More on that dreamy job in another video. And I joined a group press trip to Phuket hosted by a major yacht company called Burgess Yachts. I get lots of press trip invites around the world and turn many down, but at the time I'd never been to Thailand and I've always dreamed of staying there for a few months when I did go. In fact, I said to myself over the years, if I go to Thailand, I wanna be there for at least two months. If I go to Thailand, I want to be there for at least two months. And though the work trip was about four days, I opted to stay in Thailand on my own for a month. I didn't think I could afford to stay longer than that, so I thought my two months or more dream wasn't really an option. And then Spike Lee came along, and I ended up being in Thailand for three months. Pretty crazy, right? So after the private jet ride from Bangkok to Phuket, the sailing on two mega yachts, and wrapping up my three lavish beach resort stays for work, I looked at a Facebook group I had just joined. And it's like my very first time looking in this group for black travelers in Southeast Asia, and I see the founder's video. And I'm like, fake news, there's no way Spike Lee's in Thailand right now casting for a film. Then I started to look things up. Then I saw further posts from others about his pending arrival in Chiang Mai. And I thought, maybe this is real. But I'm two hours away by flight in Phuket, and it will mean cutting my resort stay in half in a spot I wanted to see for so long. Beyonce and Jay-Z stayed there and thrust myself in the unknown within 36 hours. So I took the risk. I booked my flight, booked my super cheap private Airbnb room, and flew on the day of the Spike Lee event. Now the question I had before arriving was, where do black folks get their hair cut in Chiang Mai? So as soon as I dropped my bags off at the Airbnb, that's what I did. You know you gotta look clean when you're in the midst of a star like Spike Lee, come on now. So I went back home, got dressed and refreshed, and made it in time for the private event. I was of course excited and nervous at the same time. I didn't know a soul there in Chiang Mai, but it was crazy to see so many black people together all the way in Thailand. The first portion of the event was standing in line to fill out our movie casting info. I remember the form asked for height, but the field was in centimeters. I'm American and work with feet and inches, so I had to Google my centimeter height on the phone and put it down. Once you fill that out, you got a few seconds to speak with Spike Lee and take some photos. We did a little small talk and I mentioned I'm originally from Brooklyn before moving all over as a kid, which he of course loved. It was a great moment for sure. The energy with all the other attendees inside was so nice and friendly that the nerves went away quickly. Shout out to the folks that I met at the party like Rashida, Aaron, Shari, Nubia, Binky, who posted the opportunity in a Facebook group for me to see, Brian, who became my stand-in partner, etc. All the other dope folks that I keep in touch with to this day. Spike then talked for about 20 minutes to the crowd, cracking jokes and telling us more about the Vietnam War film. Overall, amazing time and worth the sudden trip to Chiang Mai. The next day, I say to myself, that event was cool and all, but uh, did I get the part? Did I get the part? I waited a few days and got the call back email to be an extra for a key scene. Yay! But then a few days later, another email came from casting. I said, what can this be? And it said, I want to check your availability as a stand-in for this movie. And I said, oh my God, that's amazing. <gasps> um, What's a stand-in? I had no clue what a stand-in was. Then I looked it up. It's an off-camera role they're used for lighting and camera placement for an actor to save time. And usually you're the same height and skin complexion as the main actor. I read that and said, well, it couldn't be Chadwick Boseman because he seems shorter than six feet. Sorry, Chadwick. Just to confirm, I googled his height. It said 183 centimeters. Mind? I I'm standing in for Mr. Black Panther himself? Wait, wait, What? what is happening? Like guys, I was just going to backpack around Thailand after my work trip. 
how on earth did I end up getting an opportunity like this? Needless to say, I said yes to both opportunities and canceled my return flight and prepared to start working on set with one of the most iconic movie directors of all time. And that is part one of my crazy Thailand story on the Spike Lee experience. In part two, we'll get to the nitty gritty on what it's like being an extra on set for a day. Then part three, I'll give you the real rundown on my same time as a stand-in for Chadwick Boseman for a whole month. Stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and leave a comment and be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. See you on the next one. Peace.